Well, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone, and thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm just so humbled that all of you came out to spend this evening with us, and I hope that you leave, as Stacy said, encouraged and, and really blessed by the things that you hear and the things that, that we're going to do tonight. Uh, I want to thank um, Behringer and Evie June Ayers for leading us in worship. They did an amazing job. And along with, with uh, the young girls, you know, uh, what a joy to see a new generation rising up and really taking their place in the kingdom of God. And uh, we hear a lot in every circle I've been lately, why do you do what you do? And that's why we do it, because we, we want to create a world uh, where there, our kids are going to grow up with liberty and freedom. You know, we fight for what we love, and we love our kids, and we want a good world for them. So, so that's why I'm here, and I'm pretty sure that's why most of you are here as well. So um, uh, I'm going to just uh, talk a little bit about a number of things, but just kind of highlight some things about truth. Um, you know, I am of the belief that God is moving in the earth today. You know, what we've seen over the past four years is uh, unprecedented, it's alarming, and it's overwhelming. But in the midst of that, I think God is using this time as a warning, and he's calling us to unite as a body of Christ, to come together, and to stand for truth. So I have two verses, I, and I guess that's my first slide maybe, um, that, are, that are kind of the foundation for what I want to say tonight. And the first one is, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, that is a direct quote from Jesus, and that pretty much says it all. And the next verse, Proverbs 23, 23, says, Buy truth and do not sell it. Get wisdom and instruction and understanding. You know, it says to buy truth, which means that it might cost us something. And then it says, do not sell it. We shouldn't trade it. We shouldn't get rid of it. We need to hang on to it. So we're going we're gonna to buy some truth tonight. So a little bit about Restore. I see a lot of new faces that I, um, I'm so glad you're here. So I want to tell you just a little bit about our ministry. Um, Stacy and I birthed this ministry 15 years ago. Uh, it's a pro-life ministry, and our focus was primarily on bringing healing to the devastation that abortion caused. Um, that is an area where we both had found freedom and God used our experiences and ignited a fire in us. Um, but even then, all those years ago, we knew that Restore encompassed so much more than just abortion. So we are pro-life and we are pro-Jesus and we are pro-love. And at the root of all of that is that we are pro-truth. And I think that that is the missing ingredient, missing ingredient in the worldview of all of that. They're missing some truth in it. So over time, our ministry has uh, kind of morphed into being a freedom ministry in every area of life because it's, it's all connected. It's all connected. So it's our desire to bring healing, to equip, and to empower others really to live out their God-given purpose. And a lot of that begins with unveiling truth. So what is truth? What is truth? Webster's Dictionary's definition of it says that truth is the real facts about something, the things that are true. Well, godly truth is what is, what is consistent with the mind, the will, the character, the glory, and the being of God. God is the author. He's the source. He's the determiner and the ultimate standard for truth. Truth is pure and unchangeable and it cannot be broken. But we live in a culture that is bombarded by deception. You know, and it didn't happen overnight, but, um, you know, sadly, deception and truth are both going to flourish. I think I had this misconception that somehow when truth broke out in the public square, that we were all going to jump on board and everybody was going to say, yeah, that's truth. But I have come to realize that that is not the reality. The reality is that they are going to both flourish at the same time, but it's incumbent on us to choose truth. While they both flourish, we have to choose truth. You know, truth will triumph over deception the same way life triumphs over death, love over hate, um, mercy over revenge. But the true victory of truth 
only comes to those of us who have chosen to align ourselves with it. So we're going to talk a little bit about my personal life, just a little brief history. Um, I have lived way too much of my life shrouded in lies and deception. Uh, growing up in extremely loving Christian conservative home, I would seem like the most unlikely candidate for abortion. But in the midst of that loving home, I also learned fear and insecurity and anxiety and perfectionism. So when I was 25 years old and I was faced with a challenging pregnancy, I succumbed to the lie that abortion was the best thing for me. You know, and I have to be honest, there was definitely a voice inside me saying that this is so wrong. But that quiet voice was drowned out by the screams of fear. So after falling into that trap, I believed the lie that I could never tell anyone. So I planned on carrying that secret of shame and guilt and grief and disappointment. I was going to carry it forever. Well, 20 years later, God steps in. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't asking for it. I wasn't expecting it. So it was really pretty miraculous. Uh, he orchestrated things in my life that I could not imagine. I had a real come to Jesus moment. And... Uh, he shed light on my life, and he brought truth. He brought healing. He set me free, and he gave me a voice. And that experience changed the trajectory of my life, and it led me on a path of truth-seeking and truth-telling. So our mission tonight, throughout the evening, is to shed light. And I think we have to recognize that this is a spiritual battle. It's, a, you know, it's good versus evil. We see so much going on, but there is... There is a spirit behind it, and the real enemy wants to destroy God's kingdom. And sadly, he's after our children. So I think it's time that we bring awareness, we awaken up those who happen to be asleep, and we give knowledge and tools, and we start conversations about hard things. So I love this verse. I don't think I have a slide for it. It's Ephesians 5.11 says, Take no part in worthless deeds of evil and darkness, and instead expose them. So this is, you know, God has commissioned us to do that. We are here to expose the darkness and to shed light. You know, so we, we would not have time tonight to address the magnitude of all the deception that's going on around us. I mean, there's so much. There's pro-life, and there's our education system, you know, big tech, our health, um, you know, political arena. It's, it's just endless. So I, since we're not going to do that, I feel like the Lord has given me a few points that, I'm, that have been kind of truth bombs to me and things that have really uh, opened my eyes and moved me to my knees and I am just going to share some of those things with you tonight. And hopefully they're going to whet your appetite and you all can do your own digging. So um, you're not going to see these things on the news and you're not going to see them on social media. So to begin with, I want to update you on what's happening in the pro-life world. That's kind of my lane. Uh, and there's some good news. So let's, you know, there's always good news, right? The good news is that since the reversal of Roe v. Wade, it's believed that 32,000 lives have been saved. Yes, praise God, you know, and that, that statistic is kind of old, so it's probably more than that, you know. And that did not end abortion, but it did break the death curse over America, and it's a prophetic sign of the spiritual revival that's really coming to our nation. We have to believe that. But as I said, um, it did not end abortion. In fact, over half of all pregnancies in the United States end in abortion. And abortion has a new landscape. Our challenge has intensified as the abortion clinics have moved from neighborhood facilities to a young woman's bathroom. 35%, and again, this statistic is climbing rapidly, 35% of all abortions are medication-induced and nearly half of them are covered by insurance. So in case you don't know what a medication abortion is, that is also uh, called the abortion pill. Some call it a chemical abortion, and it's actually two pills. A woman will take two pills, one on the first day, and that causes the baby inside the womb to die. And on the second day, she takes the other one, and, and it causes her, her body to expel the baby. So that, that's what happens with, the, with an abortion pill. 
and it's super easy for them. They go online, they fill out a questionnaire, and they send them the medication. So recently, I ministered to a woman who had gone through this process, and uh, when she contacted me, she was devastated. She was probably the most distraught woman I've ever ministered to. She was so upset. So in sobbing tears, she said, oh my God, what have I done? What was I thinking? So she eventually, I was able to talk to her and minister to her, and she went on to tell me what she actually did. She said she went online, she filled out the farm, they overnighted her medication. They asked her how old she was, they asked her how far along she was, and if she needed it for herself or for a friend. They asked her if she needed it right away or for possibly something in the future. No proof was required of her age or how far along she was. And the abortion pill is promoted as safe and easy. Neither of these are true. The risk of hemorrhage is high, and it's e extremely painful. They're not safe, um, and they're not easy. However, they are FDA approved, and they are marketed as saying, there is no need to leave the comfort of your home for abortion care. They call that health care. You know, young women, young girls are doing this alone. Uh, it's dangerous, it's hurtful, and it's traumatic. You know, and, and currently the abortion pill uh, can be taken through the first trimester, and they're diligently working to move it to 24 weeks, and you can only imagine. And it wasn't that long ago that you could only do them at six weeks, and then they went to seven and to eight and then nine and 11. So, so there is an agenda behind it. It's evil, and it's more than likely will only increase. So that's all I'm saying about that. <laughs> well, if the enemy cannot get our children in the womb, it's going to look for another way. How many of you are familiar with Scholastic Magazine? I mean, don't you remember, you know, getting the little papers and picking out the books, you know? Well, I recently discovered that this company promotes gender ideology and books that are aimed at grooming our children. Scholastic Magazine is the number one provider for school book fairs. And I was so disheartened by this information that I decided to do my own research. And sadly, I discovered that it was quite true. And I actually purchased some of the books on Amazon. I brought them with me tonight. Uh, it really breaks my heart. They have them geared at every age. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but this is a little board book. It's, it's geared for three to six-year-olds. And it's called, it's a story about being neither, neither. You know, so, so it's out there, and it's sad, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's devastating. Um, you know, and if you go on Amazon and you look at these books, they promote it. They say, Amazon pick, teacher recommended. One even went to say is every family should have this in their library. I mean, it's, it's corrupt, it's evil, and it's, you know, we have to put a stop to it. Um, and praise God, um, people are working to do just that. There are advocates working to give us options. At the end of my little presentation, I have a slide with several of the websites that I've looked at, several of the, the different resources, and I want to share that with you. But there is a... a a website is called skytreebookfair.org. It's organized by Kurt Cameron. Most of you probably recognize that name from what was the childhood child growing pains, growing pains. Yes, and he's a real advocate for life. And uh, they ha actually have uh, book fairs, and they celebrate literacy while ensuring that their books are wholesome and trustworthy. Another one is called BraveBooks.us. I've actually ordered from this book, this company. And they inspire young minds with pro-God stories, teaching American values for a brighter future. So we need to support these ministries, and we need to make a need for them. We need to know, they need to know that there is a need out there. We cannot let what's happening happen. Well, the last target that I want to address is, and these, these kind of all, you know, surround the life issue, so I felt like that's why God wanted me to do that. And this, this attack is... Um, human trafficking. Sex trafficking is one of the fastest growing industries in our country. It's happening right here in Dallas, big time. Most of the grooming and targeting takes place online and 
pornography, which is an issue all its own, is actually increasing the demand because many of the people on the sex trafficking pictures and films are trafficking victims. There are 500,000 American children who are actively being trapped, trapped right now, and there are 42 million at risk. I want to encourage you uh, to go look at a ministry that I have just learned so much from. It's Yako Boyan's ministry, and there are other ones out there, but, but this was, has been one that has really uh, enlightened me and educated me. They are actually involved in rescuing victims as well as educating and offering ways for people to get involved. So I learned a few things. I'm just going to pop these out. Uh, I learned that you know, we all should be looking for suspicious activity. It's happening right in front of us in airports, shopping malls, Walmarts, on the street, everywhere. And we need to be paying attention to what's going on. And if you do happen to see something that you think is suspicious, you should call your local sheriff. They are actually partnering with rescue teams to help rescue these kids. So I was, I was excited to hear that, that, um, that the sheriff's departments are doing that. Don't call 911, call the sheriff. You know, and don't be that person that's like, oh, that looks suspicious, but, you know, what if it's not? Well, if you call and it's not, praise God. But if you call and it is, praise God, too. Yeah, so let's, let's don't hesitate to get to do that. Wow, well, that feels like a lot, and those are all of the things that, that I'm really going to share about that, you know. Uh, but sadly, it's just a drop in the bucket just a small little bit of all the evil agendas permeating our culture. You know, and just like in my own abortion experience, it seems like the enemy is screaming. But we do have hope. You know, that sounds cliche, and we have God. And that sounds cliche, but it's the truth, you know. And in the midst of all of this, we have to pay attention on what God is doing and the opportunities that we have. We can't look away. We can't think, well, this storm will pass, because I don't think it's going to pass. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. You know, Jesus talks more about the increase of deception as the time grows closer to his return than he does about the Antichrist. So let's not be deceived. You know, I pray that every day. Lord, keep my eyes open. I don't want to be deceived. You know, friends, the, the godly values that have shaped our lives for years are being systematically dismantled. And it's time to boldly and persistently proclaim truth, stand for righteousness, use our voice and our influence. So I have three little points that I want to just end with tonight. Um, three triple A's. They're A words. Attention, align, and authority. And the first one is we have to pay attention to what's going on. It's never too late to get in the game. We can't ignore what's happening, and there is no room for apathy. There's no room for lukewarm. We have to be truth seekers, and we have to be truth tellers. Second point was we have to align ourselves with the Word of God. Our Bible is our rule book. It's our guide. John 17, 17, it's the little verse that's on the, all of your Rice Krispie treats. It says, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. You know, the only way to stay steadfast in the truth is to stay steadfast in the word. God is our creator of the universe, and he gets to make the rules. He gets to determine right from wrong, not the world. So while we align ourselves with the word of God, we also need to align ourselves with each other. We need to align with, with like-minded believers and stand together. Together we're stronger, together we're better, and we need to encourage each other. So much better together. And the third point was that we have to walk in our God-given authority. I mean, we read that, we know that God has given us authority, but so often I think that we, we dismiss it and overlook it, what that really means. The um, Bible says in the beginning that God gave us dominion over the earth. So he called us to be stewards. We are stewards of our bodies, our homes, our health, our families, our kids, our schools, our cities, our states, our nation. We have to steward everything. John 14, 12 says, I tell you this timeless truth. The person who follows me in faith, believing in me, will do the same mighty miracles that I do. 
we get to do the miracles, guys. We get to do the miracles, and we have to understand and believe that we can. So uh, can we put that slide up that's got all the resources on it? There it is. So you might want to take a picture of that. And that's not, I didn't mention all of those tonight, but those are just, those are just some of the, the websites that I often look at, some of the places that, that have really helped open my eyes, given me information, and been really encouraging. And I know there's a lot more, but that's a start. So, um, so uh, be sure to look at that and do your own research. Um, I have, do I have time for a quick story, Stace? OK. I love stories. I love stories. And uh, I kind of think that they're like parables. And I have a, a story that God's kind of put on my heart, an old memory that I want to share with you. And then I'll close. Um, when Evelyn, she was the 10-year-old that was singing up here tonight, when she was about two and a half years old, she was at my house with her cousins. And I have a pantry that's got a snack bag in it, and it's kind of free for all for the kids. They don't really even ask. They just go in there. And I saw her go in the pantry, and she got this bag of pretzels. And she came in with her little hand. She opens the bag, and she opened it upside down, and the pretzels went all over the floor, pretzels and salt. So I'm watching her out the corner of my eye, and she starts to pick them up. And she picked up a couple with her little hands, and it just was pretty hard. So she just laid them down, and then she went over to the pantry and got another bag. So I piped in, and I'm like, no, 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 you know, you, can't, you can have another bag, but we have to pick up these pretzels. So we get a bowl, and the two of us start picking up the pretzels. She picks up a few, and then she says, she looks at me, and she says, Mimi, I think you got this. <laughs> she was tired of doing it. It was too much work, and she thought, oh, you can do this. I just want to go eat the pretzels. Well, it's pretty evident what the moral of that story is, you know. Uh, we would love for God to chime in and, and just do it. We would say, come on, God, you can do this. But he's asked us to do it. He's our helper. He's going to hold our hand. He's going to put the bowl out for us and walk through it with us. But we have to do the work. We have a part to play. So tonight, as you hear the other speakers, and, and I just want you to, to listen to what's going on inside you. You know, I believe God is calling all of us. So uh, I want you to pursue it with all your heart. If he's telling you to do something, whatever it is, you know, ask for boldness, ask for courage, share it with someone, and together, together we can all make a difference. Amen? Amen, yes. So that's my spiel. Um, uh, the next thing that we're going to do this evening is I have a video that I want to share with you, and I'm super excited to share this video. Um, it's my dear friend, Brittany. Brittany is a, a part of our ministry. Um, God has just done amazing things in her life. She's, she's a real example of the one that's out there doing the work, and she just exudes the message of hope. And God's done miracles in her life, and I think you're going to enjoy this touching story. So, so this is my friend, Brittany. Um, Brittany is a, a leader with Restore. She's a leader in her church, and uh, she's an amazing friend. And I've asked her to come today just to share a little bit about her testimony, her story, because God's really moved in her life, and I know that she's going to touch a lot of others. So my first question is, um, basic question, just tell me a little bit about your journey. So my healing journey yes, really began, um, it's been 18 years. And it's really been a journey. It's been in chapters, if you will. Um, at first, it was a lot of coping with uh, just finding things in the world to just shove it down and numb it out, first with drugs and alcohol. And then um, when I was started to face natural consequences for those things, I got sober. But then I was left without a solution. I was left without uh, a Band-Aid for um, to keep the lid on Pandora's box and it just just all started to come out to the surface and I had so many trust issues with God because of my abandonment um, with him and my security issues um, from why didn't he show up for me um, where was he when I was going through all of my hard times how come he didn't rescue me from being sex trafficked how come he didn't prevent me from going through childhood abuse um, and I just struggled with 
um, just trusting anyone really. Um, I couldn't trust God, so who could I trust? And so I just internalized everything and just sucked it up, if you will. I kind of had this feeling like I knew God was the answer and I was just going to church because everyone else in my sobriety house at the time was going to church. And um, the Lord really just got a hold of me and told me like, you don't even know who I am. I learned that not only did I not trust God, but I also didn't feel deserving of his love because I had an abortion. The shame, I think, was the hardest piece um, because I had worked so hard to shove all those things down deep and not look at them. The pain from the past, um, specifically with my abortion, I, I felt so undeserving of uh, forgiveness. Um, and that this was my burden to bear, that I made this choice and that it somehow exempted me from forgiveness. I would never say that to someone else, and I knew that it wasn't true to someone else, but for me, it just felt like, okay, I'm a murderer, and that's just my cross to bear for the rest of my life, and that if I accepted Jesus' forgiveness for my sin, that it stole the justice that my baby deserved. And, and so Satan had me, you know, convinced in my, in my flesh that that was, that I was an exception to the rule, that this sin was something that I was going to have to just bury, you know, in myself and just point all that pain and anger towards myself because that's what I deserved. Right. And when it came to the, um, being sex trafficked and using my body for monetary gain, I, I lost all love and um, value in my body, like my physical mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. and that I wasn't special, that um, my purity wasn't possible, that I right. didn't, that I was just used up and I was damaged goods. It wasn't until recently when I could attach the truth that I didn't ask for those things to happen. And God didn't do those things to me. Those people did those things to me. Yeah. and. And I really do think that the Restore Ministry helped um, in that journey because I think it was, I could finally see myself, I could kind of separate myself from who I was then and who I am now and just have so much compassion for her. And the Brittany who was 18 years old and who went through all those things, it was like going through the, the shame and the ugliness of dealing in, in working through my abortion and like allowing the Lord to heal those innermost parts of myself and yeah. he, his goodness was just right there and it wasn't as scary to to lean into it. My last question is you know God's brought you through so much and he has a big heart so uh, what do you see God doing with right now? Well it's it's amazing you said the big heart I think for so long my I was so focused on me and keeping it all together and um, through restore and this free and uh, these other Bible studies and programs and just getting to know the Lord and through scripture my relationship with the Lord has grown so much that I am it's like I, I, I could just bust at the seams with like the fullness of the Holy Spirit and I just I see myself so much and um, in a lot of women that I walk with and um, and it's sad to say but I see so many lost and hurting women within the church and so God has just not only freed me from the bondage of these things but removed all fear of talking about them and has given me this new confidence to just whoever wants to know like I will share um, what the Lord has done in and through me with anyone, but that's also, um, I feel this push. I love this um, in my journey so many times, the, like the phrase, so that keeps coming up. And it was like the Lord didn't bring me this far just to bring me this far and that everything that I've walked through was for a purpose. Yeah. And it was not, it's not for me, it's for the glory of God. It's like, okay, well, you're bringing me through this Lord, but it's to glorify the Lord. And so, so he is, God gets the glory. he's yes. glorifying himself. Yes. yes. And I, 
I'm blown away by the ripple effect of me just being obedient and um, pouring into other women, pointing them to the Lord, um, helping them see through the lies and heal through their own journeys to restore and with their region. Um, I think that through all of this, my heart has just been broken by the lost and but my the freedom is so overwhelming it's like I can't help but just talk about the Lord all the time and the freedom available to anyone.